All right. We 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 spotted this diamond in the rough here about a week or two ago. His name's Leaf X, and I really I really dig his content. He's focusing on Star Citizen. Um and he doesn't have a lot of subscribers on YouTube. He's got quite a bit of followers on Twitch. But I want to kind of, you know, I feel like he needs more help uh, in the YouTube community. And I, I feel like he needs more subscribers than 2,000. Now, last time we saw him, he had like 1,800 subscribers on YouTube. So it looks like we shipped over about 200, 250, maybe even 300 subscribers over to him, uh, which he deserves. Uh, let, he's jumping in the game. And he's made a video here called What is Star Citizen? Explaining the game in 2021. Now, you know I always love these. You know I always love other people's views of Star Citizen. So, like, I, I kind of want to get the flavor. He's he's very silly. He's, he's, a, he's a really, really kind of dedicated content creator. And he's got a really good positive vibe. And I always dig that. Um, I'm always looking for content creators that can kind of raise the bar when it comes to that shit. I'm all about positivity. I'm, I'm all about, like, you know, being real with people, being funny, being silly, having a good time. And I think Leaf is one of those types of dudes. So let us see what he thinks Star Citizen is. It's an MMORPG sci-fi everything simulator space sandbox experience. Good. You're happy with that answer? Me neither. Because that string of letters hardly gets across the depth of the Star Citizen experience. I get asked this question a lot and I often find myself having trouble answering it succinctly. I often go on 20 minute rants to explain it and those rants tend to change every single time. What is Star Citizen? Okay. So basically... So I decided to sit down and find out what Star Citizen really is and why it's such a hard question to answer. So let's ask the question again. What is Star Citizen? To answer that a little better, let me share some of the moments of realization that a new player tends to have in the game. Games take a lot of shortcuts and condition you to expect certain things. With Star Citizen, you have to almost relearn what a game experience really can be. And I love that about it. Taking the long road, looking the views. What's up, Architect? <laughs> we were just talking about the Architect. Welcome to the fam, bro. Welcome to the fam. That's one of the things I really love about uh, Star Citizen is not easy or, or, or doesn't condition you to play a certain way that's like a fast and easy reward based way. Like it, it is something that you have to put time into. And I like games like that. So absolutely. B. I know that sounds sensationalist, but hopefully this will get the point across. Now, thanks to YouTuber Down to Earth Astronomy, we have what I call, of course, moments. Moments that at first seem like the game's error, but really it's you just learning that you have to think a little bit more about each action. Why isn't this elevator coming right after I press the button? Oh, I have to wait for it. Other players might be using it. Of course. Why can't I eat this food that I just bought? I'm clicking and nothing's happening. Oh, duh, my helmet's on. Of course. <laughs> I'm lost. Why is there no mini map for me to follow? Oh, I have to read signs like I would in an actual city that I've just gotten lost in. Of course. Why am I flopping around when I land at my ship? This game is buggy. Ah, uh, I forgot to put my landing gear down. Uh, of course. This brings to light one of the big things about Star Citizen. If it's happening for you, it's happening for everyone. Nothing is being cheated like in many other games Very that cool. may, for example, show you an animation happening that no one else can see. If an AI talks to you, everyone can hear that conversation. It's every bit as exciting as promised. If you take out a comma ray to commit crimes, it goes offline for everyone. This is one of the elements that makes SC so immersive. Another is CIG's Game design philosophy are a set of principles or rules for player experience that guide the development of gameplay loops, or how the player and world interact. What does the game feel like? CIG's philosophy is complex gameplay loops that require skill, not skill points, to complete. Yes. It rewards focus and refinement. You don't get better. Yes, you get better at it by doing the actual work that it takes with the gameplay that is designed for that particular profession. That is one of the reasons I really love Star Citizen. There's no skill book. There's there's no fucking weird ass leveling. There's there's no fucking grind to become better. It's literally like the game design and mechanics that they have they have implemented into it. And those will continue to, to layer upon themselves and get better and better like hacking, like medical 
uh, like salvaging, like mining, these all all of these different types of tasks in the game will continually get better. So people that don't like the current uh, version that is out, don't fucking worry about it. It will continually become something that gets more complex because people will, who are doing it as a profession will ask to, to, for more complexity. You understand that? That is the beauty about what is going to happen with Star Citizen. The people really don't understand that years down the road, Okay, and, and, and it's a progression. It's a natural progression that will continue, continually put new layers of evolution on top of each profession. So right now, salvaging is going to be coming out soon, and you will see like 0 0.1.0 or 1 .0 salvaging. Okay, and then a year or two from now, salvaging will, will upgrade and have many more facets and more complexity built into it, just as the same way that we see mining happening uh, and, and then refining being added to mining. These are all things that are just, 1.0 uh, in, in, installations right now that will continually be evolved upon. So this is really one of the main attractions for me for Star Citizen is that there is no fake skilling in this game. It is actually skill. You're at mining by specking points in your, your mining own. skill. You get better at it by learning material costs, refining methods, and using consumables at the right time to not blow yourself up. We'll dive into examples of that loop in just a few moments to give you a visual of what actually goes on. Now, since some people might not know, let's define what a gameplay loop is. A gameplay loop is a concept for a complete circuit of a specific activity. It defines the repetitions the player will go through. In games, this can be mining, crafting, completing a mission, or even something as simple as shooting and reloading. In most games, these loops are straightforward. Let's make a comparison to really drive home what I mean by deep gameplay loops in Star Citizen. As mentioned a moment ago, mining will be our example, since a lot of survival games have a mining loop. For this example, I have picked three other games in the open world the MMO RPG kind cool, of realm. Cool. Minecraft, No Man's Sky, and RuneScape. Here is the Minecraft mining loop. Get mining device, find material, aim, click, pick up material. Here is a No Man's Sky mining loop. Get mining device, find material, aim, click, get material. Or you could set up an auto miner so you don't even have to do anything. Oh my god, auto miners! Here's I didn't RuneScape's know they did that. mining loop. Did they fucking Get mining put... device? So fucking lazy, auto miners. <laughs> Find material. Click. I, here's the one thing about auto miners that really get me. Like it totally negates the the whole reason people would want to become a miner in the first place if you can auto mine. You know, like it, it kind of like shits on everybody that actually enjoys mining. Believe it or not, there are people out there that do enjoy mining. Click. Get material. Now let's take a look at Star Citizen's mining loop. You can mine with a ship, land vehicle, or by hand, with ship mining having unique materials. Hand mining. Get mining device. Find material. Right click, scan. Make sure the material is worth getting. Left click. Use scroll wheel to inject heat. Watch the heat meter and keep it in the safe area. Going over will explode the rock, potentially killing you. Getting closer makes it easier to control the volatility, this number over here, from fluctuating your meter too much. Pick up rocks and store them. Land vehicle mining. It's the same thing, but on wheels. Ship mining. Get ship, find asteroid belt or rocks on surface. Scan, find rock. Is it good rock? Check the materials. Not worth it. Dan Trufin. That's who we have to thank for this. Dan Trufin, the the Viking Nordic god, man. This guy puts so much time into uh, the actual industry, and I thank him for it. Uh, Dan's not just the only dude involved in this, but he's the guy out in the forefront that's, that's on Cloud Imperium's videos. But Dan... Uh, is somebody that I can see is very passionate about having complexity built towards the mining profession. Also, uh, he's he's involved in salvage as well. Very, very excited to see what will be coming down the way, uh, knowing that Dan is behind this type of work. Find new rock. Repeat until good rock. Open mining mode. Left click. Inject heat. Use mining consumables if you would like. Consumables do different things to help you out. Split rock. Repeat the process. Switch to extraction. Get rock. Ah, crap. A pirate hunted me down and just killed me. Higher protection. Repeat mining process. Go to station. Sell. <laughs> now, to note, this is simply selling the raw material. But since we didn't dive into the other games and their crafting systems or what you can do with the materials afterwards, I'll spare you the extended gameplay loops you can tack on to the end of your mining trip in Star Citizen to make even more money and affect the dynamic economy. As you can see, common gameplay loops like mining in most games don't require a ton of skill or knowledge about the subject. 
For mining and Star Citizen, you need material knowledge, selling prices in a changing economy, knowledge of ship parts and consumables to be more efficient, and an engaging mining process itself. Almost everything in Star Citizen has been approached with this philosophy of game design. Make it deep, make it immersive, and make it constantly engaging. Okay, okay, obviously it is a video game, but I put quotes around it for a reason. Because Star Citizen is more like a universe simulation built for you to exist within. It exists whether you're there or not. In single player games, the world simply pauses when you're not around. It has no need to continue existing because it's built for you. Things only progress when you progress them. And this sort of stands true as well in multiplayer games when it comes to stuff like personal quests. SC has a brilliant backend called Quantum that simulates AI behavior even if there are no players active in the area. These AI called Quanta have lives that they live out, jobs they go to, and personality traits that determine Not how they yet. go about those activities. These AI can fight, build, sell, eat, and drink. Not this in opens yet. the world to dynamic interaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not in yet. I don't know if he knows that yet, or or he's going to explain that he is. Uh, wait a second, E Rat. He's a new. I think he's a. I think he's new to this. So before you start calling him names, right? He's a good dude. I don't think he understands that this is maybe down the road, or maybe he's going to explain that it's down the road. Uh, but like, yeah, we we. What is this? White knight mode? No, it's not in the game. I I, I understand that. Erad, Erad is becoming uh like like angry. <laughs> he might be yeah, we all understand it is not in the game. We all understand that it is not in the game. Quantum is not in the game yet. It is nowhere near. We just we just released a video about uh what needs to happen for a true star citizen economy. Uh, we walked. We watched a Jack, John Axton or Jack Axton video, uh, who I happen to like, and I basically said there needs to be the actual demand. There needs to be manufacturing nodes that need these raw materials. Yeah, I was. I said John Axton. I know. Ah, it's Jack. You see, I corrected myself. People love to correct. I have a live stream going here, Erad. I'm not editing a video on YouTube. <laughs> God damn, Erad. Erad. Erad's chaffing the chaps, man. Erad's chaffing them. Erad. God damn it, Erad. Put down the laser rifle, bro. Put it down, dude. Okay, like, here he goes. Look, DG. Look. Same look. Hold on. I'm, I'm stopping this whole show for Erad. He doesn't understand how much I love him. You see, I'm stopping this whole, whole show for him. Go ahead. Look, DG says. Go ahead. I get mocked by my students every day, all day long, because I can't get their names right. They're, it's okay, dude. <laughs> It's okay. It's they they love you though, you know? They do love you. So for once, someone else fucks up and I'm happy. Erad dude. Okay, I mean like truly in essence, he is aptly named. I mean like if we all think about the fact that he is named the eradicator, like he is doing exactly what he has set out to do by his mission statement and his aptly named name. I mean, he is the eradicator. So you see, he saw something and he is eradicating it. But there was no need for eradication, you understand? Because I'm giving you some context. <laughs> I, I don't think Leaf is that old of a star citizen player number one so i'm not quite sure he understands that quantum isn't in it we know in this community and you know and i know that it isn't and that is one thing that we bitch about all the time that we want this in the game so that trading can come back so that mr axton can actually feel like he wants to log in and do trading trading is gone trading traders need to come Ooh, oh, oh, excuse me. Traders, what, Pepe? Yeah, I know, I know, dude. Traders need to come back into the game, but the only way that's going to happen is when Quantum is actually in the game, which need, and, and, and the number one driving factor is going to be, I think, I think server meshing. I, I don't think they're really going to put Quantum in until they figure out server meshing. That's my own 
opinion. That's my opinion. But they need these, these nodes in the quantum that is planned out by Tony Z. They need these manufacturing nodes to say, hey, we're gonna, we need these goods. We need these refined goods to make X, Y, Z. Once they do that, I think that's what you're going to see. I think you're going to see more traders come back in because that, the economy will be a true economy or as close to it as that it can, providing us that that simulated demand, which, you know, it's not player-driven demand. I had a guy in a video that I did. I just released that video. got mad at me. He said, no. Here, wait, hold on. Let's look at this comment because I want you guys to understand what it is that I see here uh, on my channel. <laughs> Hold on one second. Here he is. Here's the comment, just so you guys can read it. On the on the latest economy video where I say what does it what a true star citizen economy needs, and I'm basically saying everything I'm saying now, which you know it actually needs demand. It, it needs manufacturing nodes to, you know, crank out goods, and it, it need that demand needs to be real. They don't need to operate off an Excel sheet. <laughs> which is kind of what it is right now. It's kind of just like the, 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 the developers, the designers that are involved with the economy are just kind of punching in numbers and, and doing random testing right now to see where people are going. And it's literally all on a timer. And once those goods are gone, they're gone. And then it refreshes with the timer. It's kind of how it's built right now. It's really sloppy. It's, it's very basic. And it's, it's still fetch a, a to B quest right now in the economy. So I, I talk about this for people that are into the economy videos, which aren't, aren't many actually, uh, sadly. Uh, but, you know, because, you know, people, you start talking about economy and stuff and people go to sleep. Uh, but this guy wanted to tell me on this video where I'm basically saying everything I'm saying right now. I love how when they start out like this. This guy says, no, <laughs> like, like what a way to start a, a, a civil discussion. Like what, a, like this is, this is this right here is just such a great way to start a conversation with somebody when you disagree with them. Right. He says, no, <laughs> like this is what I deal with. Right. Everyone seems to think that they're going to play this like WoW or EVE or ED. Quantum is a real simulated economy. If you can't make money, it's because you don't understand economics or don't put any practice that you know about economics. The goal is not have a simple way to get rich quick. You have to actually understand the market, check pricing, develop your information networking with other players for valuable intel on futures for commodities, supply, output, demand, trade, stickers, rods, the optimized quantum fuel, consumption, and travel, etc. Making money trading in SC isn't some plebeian fetch quest. It's actually market and market conditions skill not skill points the, the guy didn't fucking watch one bit of the video I, 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 here's my response you guys ready for my response did you even watch this video I agree with you dude <laughs> like yeah yeah I mean that is the that is the best thing that I, I really I really really hate people like this like I, I really fucking despise people like this uh, chrono clock, dude, if you're going to be an asshole, at least have some type of an educated stance. I'm literally agreeing with you, dude. Like everything I said on that video was basically everything you told me I was like, you, everything I said on that video is everything you're saying. It's like a fucking echo chamber. Like you, but you're disagreeing with me for some reason. <laughs> Right, right, right. No! This motherfucker, this bald-ass motherfucker who's obviously growing a stash to get more viewers. <laughs> this guy, this guy's fake. This guy's fake news. This guy doesn't know anything he's talking about. Look at him. He's a bald motherfucker. He can't talk right. <laughs> he doesn't know what to say. He has no knowledge. Let's dismiss him. No! Like, he, he did not spend... 30 seconds watching this video. He didn't spend 30 seconds. He can't say names right. He says John Axton, not Jack Axton. Can you believe this guy? <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. Like, that's what I'm trying to say. It's like, people are so quick to jump. And it's just like, uh, like, I, I, like, that is, like, that is the hardest thing about being a content creator. Is just like, you know, sometimes you're like, fuck, man. Um, and, and I just want to get you guys, 
aware of what was going on right there uh, in, in, in my experience as a content creator. It's, it's ridiculous. So, yeah, like, here we go with Leaf's video. We're going back into it. Is that cool, Erad? <laughs> like, I, th- I feel like, like here's here's one of the things that I want everybody to realize while we watch this. And Erad just is like, ba 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 ba. <laughs> like, like there is no quantum in the game right now. We all want quantum in the game. You know, it would be really funny if we start out this video. <laughs> he saw the stash and felt threatened. <laughs> The stash, man, the stash, it's, it's, it's got its own power, you know? What would be funny if I started out this video is if, if Leaf says that this is not in the game yet. Like, that is going to be funny to me because I know Erad was quick on this. I'm hoping, I am literally hoping now that this dude is like, but that isn't in the game yet. Like, I want that. He might not say that, but damn, that would be hilarious. (laughs) That would be so good. Uh, <laughs> uh says DG with that stash, you need to say, do you think I have a plethora of quanta? <laughs> we're we're gonna, get, we're gonna get that cash. We're gonna get that. Does it take into effect other AI and players alike? They don't stop when you stop. In most MMOs, when you accept a quest, it will still be there when you come back after logging off for the day. In Star Citizen, that mission may be multiple star systems away and be over by the time that you get there. Or an AI you were hunting may have been taken down by another player or potentially even another AI. It's not here just for you, but every living thing in it. This helps create a world that truly feels alive, unique, and ripe for emergent gameplay. This smoothly takes us to our final topic. Oh, he didn't say it. It's a leaf. So yes, that is an official correction to what Leaf's video is portraying. It is not in the game yet. It's okay, Leaf. We still love you, bro. We still love you. Erad does. We all want to have a game that grabs our attention and immerses us into the world. This is harder to do than it seems, in all honesty. It's really easy to fail at translating the world into something you really feel into. The game may be beautiful, but it feels empty. It may have lots to do, but it feels out of place to the world that you're in. You can try to get this immersion through a lot of things. Some games try to do it with beautiful graphics, some with music, some with in-depth gameplay. Star Citizen does it all. Star Citizen's attention to detail and deep gameplay loops, part of the reason it has taken so long to make, (laughs) gives it an unparalleled level of immersion. Look at that spaceport floating above this planet. That's not a backdrop. There are players up there doing stuff. Fly away from a planet with no loading screens, and you realize you were, just a few moments ago, staring at the blemishes and pores of another character's face. <laughs> great, great. They do funny shit with Foyp. Yeah, I don't know if he knows that. I don't know if Leaf plays enough or or is in-depth enough to know that that is not in the game. That's something interesting. If if he's watching, I'd be curious to, uh, like, I'm pretty sure he doesn't know. If, like, if, if he said that, he's the type of dude, like, that probably doesn't realize that isn't in the game. But, like, that is something really important to state. You know, that is something really important to state. Face or blades of grass on the surface. He's just playing it casually. How about your ship you know, losing? He li- listen. He's a, he's a, he's mainly a Twitch streamer who plays this casually and has a fun time at it. And if he doesn't know it, he needs to understand that it is not in the game. Definitely. Erad says if he doesn't know, it's even worse because it means he uh, would mean that he's making content without doing research. Burn him. <laughs> Erad, the eradicator. I can hear like I literally hear the eradicator laughing right now in my head. Like. <laughs> Like, I literally hear it. This is why Erad's blowing up, man. This is why Erad's blowing up, dude. <laughs> this is why Erad's blowing up. I love it. I love it. In control because you lost a wing or a thruster in a fight. Or accident, okay, it happens to all of us. Forcing you to crash land and wait for a friend to come pick you up. Maybe it's that you ran too fast and trip while walking into a new room. Oh, I tripped, out. Or that you broke your legs jumping down a high spot. I only got 20 seconds. And now you need a doctor to fix them. Or my favorite, some guy walked up to you at the bar while you were waiting on the NPC to deliver you a drink and starts proximity chatting with you while you can see his facial expressions since they have a tech to capture it with a simple webcam and now you've got a role play scenario on your hand. Yeah, what do you- I will say this, you know, you know, back in the day when, when I started, <laughs> like you guys are talking about research, you guys are talking about like knowing what's going on in the game development 
uh, process that is like what's happening in this journey that we're in. Back in the day when I started, like everybody's research game was tight. Everybody's. It was just a uh, tactical advance. It was myself. It was STL Youngblood. It was board gamer was brand new. Uh, and and then Nubifier came a little bit after that. But like those were like old school uh, SC hardcore content creators. And like all of us like were in depth into the research. You could see when I first started, I didn't do too much research. I just came in like, whoa, what the fuck am I in? This is amazing. And I had that passion like so many of us do where it was just like oozing out of us like this is fantastic. It was that honeymoon phase like, oh, my God. And then you could see my content start to develop as I, you know, you know, a month to two months, three months. And then you started seeing me like pour myself into what was going on and the work that was going on. And that's the way it started out. A lot of the content creators were hardcore into, and I still am, still love the development, as does Erad. And um, then more content creators came on board. And, it, and and the pool started getting larger, and, and the people in the pool started, you know, filling up the pool. And, you know, I remember in 2019, I think it's thereabouts, when my mom got really sick, and Erad was watching me tons because I did a lot of research on it, and he... You know, he was he respected that, and watched me and and then Erad got a lot involved because I, I had to take like a four or five month break and my mom was super sick in the hospital. And I remember him talking to me and Erad was like, you know, like, I think I'm going to start my own YouTube channel. Um, And I was like, wow, I was like, that's awesome, dude. Go for it. Do it. You know, like I, I totally supported him. I still love the fact that he's blowing up the way that he is. He deserves it. He puts so much work and research into his content. It's great. Uh, and to see him like, ha like have that old school kind of mentality towards the content he creates and stay true to research is very valuable. It's very important. Um, and I respect that he stays true to that. I respect that. And then as time progresses, like now we're in 2021, right? I'm not saying anything bad about Leaf. I think Leaf's a really cool, fun guy to watch. Uh, but like a lot of the newer people to Star Citizen are really more into the playing of it and the gameplay and what, you know, like in the excitement and the action, uh, but not maybe so much towards the game development. And you can see that in, in Leaf's content. I think Leaf's at that stage where he's, He's now starting to dig and delve into the research. So I think that's like the context I want to kind of put out there for Leaf is like, you know, as a content creator, you come into the project or any game that you get into and that you want to kind of put out there as content and you're very excited about it and you're and you're putting out that content and you don't know too much about what's going on behind the scenes and you're very immersed in the gameplay and then as the progression happens when you really get deep into it you start to do the dive you start to do the research you start to understand who's making the game you start to understand you know the actual development what's happening with it the problems with it uh you know the 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 successes the technical difficulties and and that all I think comes in the progression or in the evolution of being a content creator you know yeah Leaf's video editing is fantastic yeah and it is an entertaining video absolutely absolutely but like that is kind of like the progression as a content creator so I I do like to see the evolution happen you know I do love to see and and, and one of the things I really expect about Erad's video is like right from the start Erad was all about the research which is cool like and, and and one thing that that I pride myself on, and and I know Erad watched me watches me for it as well, uh, is, and I understand you know because we've got such big communities, it's it's harder and harder to watch each other's content. You know, from time to time, I still uh, watch Erad's videos, which are great. Uh, but like the one thing that is uh, tried and true, I think, and what I pride myself on is that I don't hold back. Like I I won't hold back my own opinion. If something's going wrong or I see something that I don't like, I will say I don't like it uh, and I will say why I don't like it. And you might not agree with it, but I'm going to come at it from an educated stance. I'm going to come at it from like an angle where it's like, hey, there's some process here that's not 
vibing well with me. And I'm going to tell you why. And I'm going to tell you the reasons why. And I'm going to tell you what it could affect uh, with the project. And 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 Erad does the same thing. And and wh- I think one of the, th- the reasons why I get s- along so well with Erad and why I consider him a good friend is that he does he does the same thing. He's tried and true. His his opinions come from a place that are are very s- well researched. And and he if he doesn't like something, he does the same thing. You know? <laughs> Say we let a load off today. Yeah, I need a drink. These bartenders. Are I, I all haven't yet, though. Erad. I haven't. I'm sorry. It's really hard to put SC into a box. Some people say it's a technological experiment with no actual release in sight. Some see it as an incredibly ambitious project that will be the greatest game ever. I see it as a chance to truly immerse myself in an experience I genuinely cannot get anywhere else. Whether it's finished or not, I know every time I step into this world Absolutely, with my friends, Erad. whether a mission or but a yeah. bug, there's always a new experience. Erad is my brother from another mother, man. <laughs> So let's try to answer the question one last time before we leave. What is Star Citizen? Dude, his friend has such Star an Citizen infectious laugh. Star Citizen is a place to play with your dude. friends and strangers. So did you buy him a drink, huh? Somebody. <laughs> Star Citizen. <laughs> like that, that, like really? He does a lot of like the role play stuff that Bed Banana does. Like, like that's one of the reasons I really love Leaf. They have fun. They like, they chill. They, they, they like, they just like to have fun. You know, and like it's really silly watching him and his crew and, and like they do they do they do a very kind of like bed bananas kind of like RP type shit, which is like really hilarious to watch. Star Citizen is spaceship combat. Four thousand rounds. Now you like to do that. OK. Star Citizen is economy simulation. I feel like Leaf will and blow up one day. there you see that the price is starting to fall off. Star Citizen is exploration. This place has like the best view. Ever. Star Citizen is a machinima tool. Until we meet. Star Citizen is whatever you make it out to be. And hopefully everything I've said in this video helps you understand why that... E- Star Citizen machinima is going to blow up. Like, Star Citizen machinima in itself is going to create so much fucking content, it's going to be ridiculous. Star Citizen machinima is huge. In fact, today we're going to be watching uh, some machinima, uh, and it looks really, really interesting to me. Uh, but the machinima side of things on Star Citizen is like fucking amazing, fucking amazing. Isn't an exaggeration, and that is why so many people right, Cash, during absolutely alpha starting still play this game. As I said, it's really hard to encapsulate what Star Citizen is into a short little video like this. And if you think it wasn't enough yet, consider watching this introduction to crime and prison systems in Star Citizen to get another idea of another gameplay loop and how deep it can really be. So thank you for watching and yeah, he, he I feel like Leaf is going to blow up, but Leaf, hey man, like, listen, we all understand. I, I understand. And I explained it to the audience here. What cycle you're in right now. You're just in that kind of like sponge phase where you're just like sucking up information right now. So go for it, bro. Keep on doing the work that you're doing, dude. Uh, I'm subscribed to him. I think he's I think he's awesome, dude. Um, I, I, am not going to like the video though, out of just the fact that like, I, I just realized this, I, I push like, but I'm, I, the only reason I'm not pushing like is because of that one piece of information in there. Uh, so I'm not <laughs> like, I, did you see that? Did you, I'm sorry, Leaf. I'm sorry, Leaf. I, you would have had my like had, yeah. Had you understood the quantum is not, it's okay though. You'll get better. It's okay, dude. It's okay. It's part of the process, bro. It's part of the process, but like over 2000 subscribers right now, help them. Subscribe to him. Tell him. Uh, tell him you're part of DG's community and just be like, "Hey, hey, we love you, bro." So go over there. Subscribe to him. Good dude. Uh, I think he's gonna blow up. I think the dude's gonna blow up.